to the Scientix webinar, The Power of Storytelling. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today, we have Marta Acevedo. Marta is a Scientix ambassador for Portugal. She has a postgraduate degree in science communication and she actively collaborates in scientific events promoted by Ciencia Viva, which is the National Agency for Scientific and Technological Culture in Portugal. She represented Portugal and the international science communication event entitled Flame Lab. And at her school, she coordinates many awarded scientific projects. During this webinar, Marta will start her presentation by explaining the meaning of storytelling and the different types of stories we can find. She will also explain the connection between storytelling and science and will present some examples of stories that can be used in science teaching. She will end up her presentation talking about neuroscience and making us understand storytelling through hormones and through the release of some uh, neurotransmitters. Uh, I just want to remind you that my colleague Noel with the Scientix account, she will be helping you with any technical problems that you might encounter. So please write to her privately in the chat if you're experiencing any difficulties in attending the session. Also, please remember to turn down your cameras and your microphones. Uh, one last thing is that if you want to receive a certification, you will have to, be, to fill in our feedback survey, which will be sent to you through the chat and the, at the end of the session. Uh, also, at the end of this session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address your questions to our experts through the chat. But remember that you can still post them throughout the whole webinar. And that's all from my side. So I will leave the floor to Marta and I hope you enjoy. Oh, thank you very much, Marina, for your lovely words. I would like to thank the European School, Ned, for the opportunity to be here and to trust me. And thank you all for your registration in this webinar. I'm uh, in a lovely place in Portugal called Torres Novas, and I'm uh, in a, a place where science events and cultural events happen. This was a hospital, so I have to thank to my education representative here in Torres Novas, Elvira Sequeira, for the opportunity and for the, for the place. Um, also my mayor, because he gave me the opportunity to be here, okay? So here in Torres Novas, they are also listening. You are not watching them. They are here and um, they will be quiet. Okay, um, so let me start. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I must confess that I'm a bit nervous about this webinar. You see, you can see me, but I can't see you. I'm used to doing eye-to-eye -eye communications. It's very helpful for a, community, for a communicator to watch the audience reaction. And this webinar is about storytelling, and storytelling needs body language. So I will do this with my hand, I'm sorry. Um, I like challenge, and this is a huge challenge. Well, for you to know me a little bit more, I'm a teacher. I teach biology, I teach geology, I teach chemistry, I teach physics, and if uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4 is teaching math, so I also teach math, so I'm a really STEM teacher. Okay, I'm also a science communicator, but let me start. Once upon a time, there was a girl, not a little girl, a girl, who lived in a beautiful house in the woods. She had two dogs. The cats, a couple of parakeets, and that huge garden. Oh God, that garden was so beautiful and so huge. One day, she decided to take a walk in the forest. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and there was a beautiful and wonderful smell in the air. Flowers. Oh. What a smell! Suddenly, she saw in the distance a shadow. She couldn't understand what it was, but she realized that the shadow was coming towards her. The shadow was getting closer and closer, it was becoming bigger and bigger. Her heart started beating so fast, her hands started to tremble. She was sweating profusely until she could see what it was. And oh my God! Well, this was storytelling. I just told you a story. So, what is a story? 
What is storytelling? Well, a story is just a narrative. It's a narrative of an actual event, it's a narrative of a fictional event, or even a mythic event. It's just a narrative. But storytelling is much more. It's the act of using voice and body language to communicate with the narrative, the story. And this process of telling a story is quite sad. It's astonishing. Try to follow me. A storyteller like me, or maybe you, we are all storytellers. Take the mental image from his head, from my head, translate them into words and body language, and then transmits to the mind of his listeners. And this is amazing because the listeners will then create the story picture in their own minds. This is a unique experience. Depending on the audience and the storyteller, each story will have lots and lots of images. The storytelling is engaging the audience and many do so. Aldor, um, you probably know who he is, he just won the Nobel Prize for Peace in 2007. Oh, um, and he was also the vice president of the United States. Okay. Well, he, in his communications, he uses a lot of storytelling. Let's see a part of one of his TED Talks to show what I want to mean. It's bad weather in the too. So we take a long. I wanna ask the I wanna ask the participants if they're actually they're actually doing the video because I'm not sure it's working properly. So if you can say it through the chat it would be great. Otherwise, you put the link. Okay, so okay, so uh, uh, videos without videos sound. Without that's what I put in the chat. So I think what we can do is to provide with the link here on the chat, so everybody can open it on their computer and watch them on their computers, and then Marta can continue with the talk. Is that all right, Marta? We can't see it. We can't hear it. We won't see it. Oh, okay. It's not possible for participants to, to, to listen to it on their computers, so I guess the best is that we we put the video here in the chat, and everyone who's uh, following this webinar, please, you can already open this link on your computers, and you can um, see this little talk, and then we can continue with the, with the webinar. So I'll wait.
Okay, so for everyone, you can see that we already, my colleague Noel, she shared the, the TEDx talk here in the chat, Did so you, you can link on it to watch it. Their talk. Marta, you have to unmute yourself if you want to speak again and comment the video as well. Are you watching the all are they watching the old video that I send it or the real one? They are watching the TEDx <laughs> talks, yeah, the real one. Not to see sure everything, the, the just a part. Cut it into parts. Slices. Sorry, Marta, we cannot hear you. I'm sorry, everyone. You shouldn't watch the whole video, just a part. I cut it, it, so you can understand what I'm going to say. Are you watching the whole TED talk? Do you remember, yeah, which, do you remember which part is it? Three minutes. I think. Okay, then I think maybe we yeah. should just move on with the next part of the webinar, if that's okay. And then okay. we'll try so again. Maybe um, watch while you the continue first with the next video. three minutes. Can I have some? Yeah, the first three minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, then for everyone, just the first three minutes. It's okay, it's no problem, don't worry. Um, just the first three minutes of the Telex talk from Al Gore. Okay, I'm saying it. We just shared the link again on the chat for everyone. We'll wait uh, for uh, for these three minutes and then we will continue with the with the webinar. Well, I think you catch what I wanted to show. So I'll continue my talk. Yeah. Okay, now we'll continue. I think three minutes have passed. It's not, yes, please say it because it is wonderful. He communicated the narrative in which he was the main character. He used body language. He used his own story. He made us wonder about each of the situations. He engaged the audience. I loved it. So I think he can now begin this talk with no difficult. The audience is ready to listen. Alan Older, you probably remember him from TV series Marsh. He was an actor and a writer and he calls himself a crusader for science communication. Uh, well, anyway, Alan Alda once said, and I'll show you, it's beautiful, effective science communication happens when we listen and connect. It happens when we use empathy. Yeah. So that's what I try to do with my story. 
Well, I, I know it has no end yet. I'll tell you the final of my story. Um, I try to create empathy. I can now give my lesson if I'm teaching with my students. I'll work and give this TED talk and I can continue, continue my webinar. So, why storytelling? Why should we use storytelling in our communications, in our classes? Well, uh, first of all, it hooks people's attention. If we deliver facts and knowledge to our children or to our audience, they for sure may gradually lose interest in learning science. Because they believe that science is boring and difficult to understand. This is where stories could be used is to capture their interest in doing and learning science. Almost without noticing, our students or our audience, it depends, want to know how the story ends, what comes next, and they will remember that story more than almost anything else that you say that day. It also is a mental organizer. You see, human brains can remember stories very well. So any information presented in the story is easier to remember than a list of facts. Imagine we are talking about a complex process with many steps and many strange names, worse, similar names, it all looks the same. Oh my God, what's this? But if you create a story, they can organize better the concepts. It also helps change years. When it changes from science lecture to a story, it gives students or audience a chance to rest the logical side of our brain and engage the creative and imaginative side. When the brain is resting, all the things they've learned before are being organized. And the story helps it. This is important for problem solving or project based learning because we are bringing creativity up. Albert Einstein once said imagination is more important than knowledge. And last but not least, Storytelling is fun. It's captivating. Most people enjoy it. Did you enjoy Al Gore's talk? The first part is accessible to everyone, regardless of education level. Rolf Hoffman was another Nobel Prize, not for peace, but for chemistry, and he was a scientist. And I think uh, we should talk science from an easy way. And he knows the value of storytelling. Yeah, science and stories are not only compatible, they are inseparable. And scientists are becoming to see this. And teachers, and science communicators. Well, we now know the value of storytelling, so we need to know what kinds of stories um, there are. Okay? What kinds of stories can we use in communication? Well, Al Gore used one kind. Personal story. It's a story about something that happened to you or your family. So they are based on factual events, which doesn't mean that storytelling might improve happen facts to make the narrative flow better. This doesn't make it a, fun, uh, um, a fictional story. It is nearly what I can call a creative, non-fictional story. Everyone knows, everyone likes gossips. So a personal story could be a good storytelling. Fiction. Fiction stories totally build from our imaginations. We have movies or we can create one, but then we have folk tales are the traditional stories, the ones uh, we listen in our childhood. We can use them just the way they are or adapt it. For example, 
Do you remember Little Red Riding Hood? Oh, so lovely folk tale. And then we have histories. Histories are also a personal story that happened to someone that we don't know personally. Why don't you use me? the history of the accidental discovery of penicillin by Excel, uh, 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 sorry, Alexander Fleming? So nice this story to begin viruses, bacteria, or what about Nehri Kurish death to show what radioactivity is? We can use this real history to start something. So, if we have those kinds of stories, can we use it when? Ever? Well, it depends. In the beginning of my webinar, I had shown you a video from a talk, TED talk, or you have captured it. Al Gore used a story, a personal story. Oh God, I imagine how it was. Um, functioned as an icebreaker. With this story, he engaged the audience. They were ready to listen to him. I started my webinar with a story too, okay? Well, part of a story. The story could be the beginning of a school unit. For instance, digestive system. Mm -hmm. But for you to understand, I'll complete my story. So you remember that the girl was scared. Oh my God! That shadow! That shadow was a wolf! But she not, didn't know what to do. God, the wolf! But she remembered. She said, stop! Don't move. Stay here. And the wolf stayed so... But she what? She's telling me, stop? Yes, I'm saying you, stop! Before you do what you want to do with me, let me show you something. I don't like chin. I don't do chin lessons. So, as you can see, I'm a little shabby. So, I'm almost water and I'm fat. I'm no good for eating. So before you do what you want to do, think. So, stop. I'm a teacher and I'm telling, I'm telling you to stop. <gasps> Then the wolf said, you're a teacher? Yes, I am. I'm a teacher. So, if you're a teacher, maybe you could explain me um, what are those uh, sounds that sometimes I produce. It's because I I'm not very, 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 very well. M my body is making sound. And then I'll say, well, the sounds come from upstairs. It's because you are not eating too well. You are eating too fast. And you have a stomach that doesn't like hair. Who likes hair? So when you eat too fast, your stomach gives the air away. So you listen to the sound. But if the sound comes from the other side, well, there's intestine. It's because you are eating too much proteins or too much fat and they don't like so as you can see um, my starting point for this uh, digestive system could help students organize their ideas in spite of saying okay so the food comes into your mouth and then they go to the stomach and then stomach do some transformations and then it goes to the intestine okay i could say it this way it's i introduced the concept of vitamins proteins stomach intestine fun it was a folk tale well adapt couldn't you see it a little bit of Red Riding Hood adept and the imagination. Probably my students would imagination the smell of the flowers. Probably they would imagination the hot of the sun in their skin. And then this a fun story. What? I say stop to a wolf and it would stop. Yeah. Why not? It's my imagination. So now my class 
is with me and I can start my lesson. See? Or I can close it. Hmm? The chara moment. So, what have we learned? And I could synthesize ideas in another story. The chara. And my students would take the chara home and probably at home they would tell the same story to the parents. So nice. And they do the, that a lot. I know it's because parents tell me. Well, it could also be for used for transitional times. Okay? When you find students are getting bored here in Portugal, our lesson lasts or 50 minutes, 90 minutes, no one can spend 90 minutes. So probably they get bored. And when they get bored, why not the story? Okay? Or to explain ideas or concepts. It's not a good idea starting a school unit talking with very difficult words and concepts, as I told before. They will turn science incomprehensible and boring. They wouldn't like it. So they are not there. Uh, I'm a biology teacher in geology and chemistry and physics. But in my biology classes, I explained to them the duplication of DNA. Okay? And it has such strange names. I don't know if there's anybody there from biology. But if we, if we use the term DNA, if we use the term nucleotide, adenine, timine, and uh, polymerase, oh God, they are such horrible names, they will forget it. But if I told them, hey, at my house, I have a cooking book. Yeah. They, in that book, I have lots and lots of recipes. And to do, for instance, a cake, I'll need ingredients. Oh, but there are lots of cakes, but almost all cakes have sugars, eggs, have um, milk, butter, I don't know, okay? And putting those ingredients together, I will make a cake. Then I will tell them. Then I will tell them. So the book is our DNA. And each page of the DNA is called a gene. And all the ingredients are amino acids. And if we put ingredients together, then we can build a protein. And then they will start thinking, but the ingredients are not are usually the same ingredients. So how can we do that with DNA? And if it uh, misses one ingredient, what will happen to the protein? See? So I explained the idea, telling them that I have a book I could also say, the depends on our audience, that I hate cooking, so I need that book, okay? If there's anybody from chemistry there, for instance, the photoelectric effects, oh God, strange names again, photons, electrons, orbital, Planck, um, light velocity, equations, equations, and equations, why not saying, Imagine that you are, you are in a storm, in a storm. And if you, you know your students well, or your audience, you could name the store and they start to imagine the store and what is there in that store, okay? And then, um, I could say that I found uh, a trouser and I love that trouser. So I pick up my pocket. And I'm seeing if I have any money. And if I have enough money, so I'm glad. I can buy my trousers. But if I don't have money, I'll forget. They will stay in the store. And if I get more money than I need, so then I can drink coffee or juice or something. So what am I saying? So my pocket, my proton, and the trousers, my electrons. So if I have money sufficiently, so I can get those trousers, those electrons, to another place, to my house, off of the store, off of the agent. See? So it's really, really, really a good idea 
to explain using storytelling to explain ideas and concepts. Okay? So, is this just me? Can we prove this? Well, yes, I can prove it to you. I've used it. And science can explain it too. When we, are, when we use storytelling, we are inducing our brain to produce hormones, neurotransmitters. For instance, we have oxytocin. The mm. effects of oxytocin are just great. They, they, you become more generosity if you have oxytocin in your blood. You trust more and you bound to me. So, with storytelling, we can induce our brain to produce oxytocin, and these effects will generate empathy. Okay? Our world uses hormones. By telling us his personal story, he humanizes himself. He's the one of us, God. Uh, okay, he was the vice president of the United States, and now. He comes out of the White House. He cried. Remember, he cried. <laughs> and he used to have a driver. And now he drives himself. And the uh, journalist, no one is there. Just he and his wife. He created empathy because he induced the brains of the thing, uh, or, or, or uh, the ones that were listening to, to him to produce oxytocin. Okay. But there are more hormones. I love dopamine. Yeah. The effects of dopamine are you get more focus, you get more motivation, and you remember things in a better way. It improves your memory. So how can we do that? With storytelling, of course. Creating when I didn't tell the end of my story, I created the spank. When I just told you that, <gasps> in the shadow, and then I didn't tell you anything else, I created the spank. And with suspense, our brain produces dopamine. And with dopamine, we get more focused, more motivated, we improve. Our Another hormone, endorphin. Well, with endorphin, well, I would like to show you a man which you can say as an overdose of endorphin. <laughs> if there is any Portuguese watching us, you probably recognize him. Okay? I don't know if we can see the movie that I had prepared. Yeah? Not the old movie again. I'm sorry. It's just. We actually managed to add the, the link to the to the video. So if anybody can copy paste it, uh, they can watch it again on their computers. Just by just by clicking on it, they should have access uh, to the you video. You want me to tell you between which minute we need it? If you are watching the old video, ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No, we don't need it. We had it cut already, and we put uh, we put oh, your cut, you. and we uploaded it on Google Drive, so people can just watch that cut. So it's okay now. And we actually just shared it again on the on the chat.
So I think you've already watched it. The timing of that was so lousy, wasn't it? It's a great humor and presenter in Portugal. Okay, so this is how you create Anderson, making people laugh. The audience, I mean the students, became more creative laughing and more relaxed and became more focused. Okay, <laughs> so with that, we have only to answer this question. How to tell stories? I'm sorry, but I have no recipe. And it's good having no recipe. Because if I told you how to do it completely, we were, we were having a lack of creativity. And we don't want that. We want imagination. Okay? But there are some steps to follow. And the first one is you have to know for whom you are talking. Who is the other audience? Probably I wouldn't tell the story to my 18-year-old students. Or I could. If, it depends on which students. I could tell the story to my 10-year-old because they would recognize the, the story. They would say, Oh God, teacher! Where is our grandma? Okay, but it depends on who they are. Okay, can uh, Al Gore um, repeat it, his story, the initial story, his personal story, in another situation? Okay, so when you have your story, you can repeat it, but don't forget, you have to know who the audience is. Because if you don't know who the audience is, uh, well, let's look for the second part of Al Gore's video. Is it cut it? Yeah? Or is the old bit? Okay, so please watch this. Okay, thank you. Please watch this. Yes, yes, it is cut. Yes, they just need to link on it. I'm sorry if I'm speaking while you are watching all this, because it's great. It's such magnificent communicator. Okay? So, you repeated the story. What happened? Once again, engage the audience with the story. But why doesn't it 
functioned in Lagos, Africa. Was the language? No. They speak English. Sometimes language is an obstacle. Mm. Could they catch the jokes? It's because he was the vice president of the United States. They know he was the vice president of the United States because if they don't know, they won't understand the jokes. See what I mean? So we can embrace our audience with this story. You can repeat it, but we have to know if we can do it, if we can do it to this audience. It's like my story. I would tell the story to my 10 year old students, not 18 year old students. They would say, hey teacher, we're not, um, we're more old than that, sorry. Okay, so another thing, so who's the audience? And another thing you should remind on how to tell stories is which hormone you want to induce. You see, every time our students come to our class, or the audience is sit to watch our talking, they have a problem because they are full of adrenaline and cortisol. And the effects of these two hormones, they make us intolerant and creative, critical, irritatable. And we have this problem to solve. And with storytelling, it's possible to change those things, okay? Which hormone do we want to induce? Okay? So, if we want to induce relax, if we want to induce focus, more memory, we have to change adrenaline and cortisol effects. So, what we want to do? Then, write a story. Okay? Life is a big, big story. Everyone has a story to tell. So, start writing your story. Your funniest episodes, your saddest episodes, to create empathy, okay? Start writing. And the next time you will give a class or a talk, first with the audience, then which hormone do I want? So I'll pick that story, okay? There are many stories available on the web, but I prefer my own stories. I'll catch them out, of course. I read a lot, okay? And um, movies, a movie, a movie can be a story. But for the 10 year old students, eyes uh, age is excellent. Uh, down that stick, uh, the island, uh, um, was so many wonderful movies that have a story that can induce hormones and provoke an effect, okay? And don't forget, you need to use your body language. I don't know if you watch me, well, if I out, but I use a lot of my eyes and my mouth and my hands and I move along and sometimes I stay in a position. Okay? Body language is one of the most important things when you are telling a story. Well, um, in my classes I don't use only stories. I um, ask students to make science beautiful and every year I have a science festival at my school. Okay? And uh, I teach my students to teach stories to other students. Here you can see uh, a student, she's in white, and the other one, and she, they, she told them that it was found something in that place, and they don't know why. So it's a suspense effect, okay? And students, oh, but now we want to see, what's that, what's that? So in paleontology, let's give it, okay? Another one, this is a student trying to explain rocks. God, usually rocks doesn't matter to everyone. Rocks! Oh, the students love, the little ones love. They, sh she uh, gave a name to each rock. She humanized the rock. She told the story, okay? And a story, so she didn't know well the rock. 
and the students left. Okay? And the crime scene, of course. Who doesn't like crime scenes? And the students love it. So the the ones you can't see, okay? So they told them very mysterious story with a bit of fun, and then they have to solve their problem. So storytelling is everywhere. Wonderful. Why not try storytelling? Well, for any questions, I think you have some questions there, but I leave my mail. If you want to uh, talk with me or give your experience or give mine, I have another kind of stories. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry from uh, for the uh, technical problem, but the weather in the United States is not good. So the movie was not getting here too well. Thank you very much all for listening to me. Okay. Marta, we have collected some of the questions okay. that have been asked to you during the during while you were presenting. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna ask them to you, so because we still have like ten minutes, uh, so if you're fine, uh, you can like go and respond to them. So the first one, uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any names, but it's from Aiden Altman, and he's asking. When is it more effective to introduce uh, the stories if, if it's in the beginning of a lecture or in the middle of a, uh, of a, of a lesson? Uh, when does this capture uh, uh, students' the, attention the better? And if there's yes, any there is some literature, literature where I can put um, uh, regarding this specific question? If I can send them warnings. Oh, uh, you can send it here through the so chat, me, or otherwise, the um, I would recommend to the person yeah. who me, the, made this question to if maybe I'm send you an email and ask you through the email, that would be okay as well. Because, as I said, they are okay. full of adrenaline. They don't want to listen to me. Oh, God, 90 minutes of a class. No way. So I have to relax them. I have to relax my audience. I have to relax my students. So I'll try to make a story. Sometimes I have it already in my head, and another times uh, I just invent the moment. Okay, um, I see they are. I was not planning to start with a story, but as I told you, my audience is not ready to listen to me. So I'll just catch a story. Okay, sometimes I invent one. Sometimes it goes well. Um, does it go well? It depends if we are used to use storytelling a lot in our uh, class or in our talk. But the beginning is just great. Yeah. Okay, so here goes uh, the answer. We From have another question by Eliana Lassen. 99. She asked, <laughs> which you age use storytelling would you use with uh, storytelling with a student? Um, in my science festival at my school, all the parents come to school. And um, I prepare my students, because they prepare the science festival, I prepare my students to do those storytelling. And parents love storytelling. They can um, understand better the concepts. Okay. Um, you told I I I went to Fame Lab. Uh, it's a communication contest. Uh, it's international contest. And uh, almost everyone have one has one thing in common: storytelling. We only have three minutes to speak about something. It's awful. Three minutes. God, I'm a teacher. I want to speak for an hour or more. Okay? Um, and in three minutes, we have to do so many things to induce our hormones to relax, to joy, uh, to engage our audience. And almost every fame lover uses storytelling. So it's wonderful with the smallest ones because they love stories. And it's wonderful with the 18. We have to adapt 
our story. We have to know our audience, but we can say, use storytelling with everyone. Okay. And we have some more questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. But there is some more some more questions. There is one from Mahesh. Asking, Sorry, I can't um, hear it. Is well, storytelling, please, storytelling only about the biography of the scientist? Uh, that is that is his question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. He asks, is yes, hello. Okay, I will repeat the question. He asks, no. uh, I am Probably reading this question. It is, if you are, uh, is storytelling web, only uh, about the biography of, of the scientist? Uh, personally, I don't use a lot of biography. Um, I told you the um, uh, Alexander Fleming and his penicillin or Mary Curie. Sometimes I use that. But storytelling is much more, not only the biography. Okay? Um, your personal story. Uh, adapting to what you, you want to teach, um, or as I made it here, a folk tale adaptable, okay, because soon you will find it, where's the grandma, where's the food, okay, and those things. Um, not only biography, I don't use it a lot, I confess, okay, I use funny stories, personal stories, stories from the heart, stories with uh, strange things happening. What? The wolf stopped because I said I was a teacher? Not possible, you see? So, imagination and creativity, it, um, you have to have that when writing your story, okay? First, try to find some stories in the web. I can then read some stories here uh, um, or what else, okay? Or you can email me. So. And I can give another example of the stories I use in my classes and in my talks, okay? Um, and then you'll see you have wonderful stories in your life to tell to your students, to tell to your audience, to engage them. We don't want them to reach them. We want them in this area. We want them to love science, isn't it? Okay, um, I have two more questions. The first one, uh, they are asking on the effect of storytelling to affective variables, such well, as attitudes you know towards science or motivation, just and if there work. is any significant differences school, so on the What can effects. we do? Do we leave them? Okay, you don't want to know? Go away. No, it's not my attitude towards the, those students. Um, if my students are getting bored in my class, I ask, what am I, what am I doing wrong? Okay? So then I have to adapt me, adapt to the audience, to those students. And what I've noticed is when I use storytelling, uh, they change their behaviors in my class. Um, last year I had a, a class with two or three uh, students that were repeating it, so um, they couldn't pass the year. They were uh, more two or three years than their colleagues. And they didn't like it all, okay? So I started to say, you will love science, you love geology, you will love rocks. I know it will happen. So. I started to find some stories, to write some stories about a rock. I humanized the rock, I gave it a name, and I told them stories. I used so many body language and my voice, uh, different tons of voice, and he started to relax. And then I put some fun ingredients in my story, and they started to relax. And you know what happened? Um, the, they wouldn't want to leave the class. And each time they went home, 
to their home by the evening or so, uh, they were they told that story to their parents. So we can use this to solve some of these problems. Wait. There are students and students, okay? So this have to have um, some uh, sense. Do you understand me? I think, okay? Maybe I have the help. And the other question? Yes, there is one last question from Jose Maria Diaz, and he asks if uh, you would uh, can be a short video of fiction uh, considered in a of class fiction, of sorry? physics. Yeah. I understand he's movie? asking about your opinion if you would share it uh, in a class. He said a video of fiction. Um, that's what he wrote on the chat. Um, I, I understand it. Uh, like a movie or something like that. Uh, Otherwise, Jose Maria, write on the like on the that. chat I what use, you mean by um, video of fiction. Dante speak, and they see the old movie. Um, it, it's funny when I say when I uh, enter my class and I say, "Oh, students, so uh, do you have popcorns? What popcorns, teacher? Yeah. Did you bring popcorns? As I told you, because we are watching. We will watch a movie." And they will say, oh, we don't have class. We will. No, no, no. You are watching the movie because you are in my class. And uh, the funniest thing is that when they are watching the video, they see it from another perspective, from the science. They try to find mistakes. They try to find some uh, wrong concepts. And I, I use videos, the old video, not the part of the video. All videos uh, and movies in my class. Sometimes I use this. I use that. So I'm not reading. Okay. Uh, did I answer your question? I don't know. Yeah. It's wonderful. Or uh, um. I don't remember. The I think it did because he said English. something of like a like a Star uh, Wars video, like a yeah, movie. Um, oh God, I don't remember, but I think I'm a friend, Jose Maria. I can then tell him which nice videos are there to show stories. Okay. The only thing is that it's not me talking; it's the video talking, and we are teaching to the students. Uh, okay. 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 Um, so Jose Maria says okay. So I think he you answered his question. And um, we don't have any more questions for the moment. I think, and we are already five minutes past uh, the ending of the webinar. So I think we'll have to stop it here. Thank you very much to everyone for attending this this webinar and thank you Marta for presenting it it's been wonderful and we're seeing already a lot of of good comments on the chat from all the participants and to everyone just a reminder that in the upcoming days you will have the recording available on the Scientix wow. website thank so you, you will be able to re-watch this webinar again and check all the videos again for everyone who didn't have a oh, moment yeah. to watch it so that's all from my side thank you Marta and thank you everyone again Bye, thank you, bye.